you find in your Bibles the book of Galatians, or if you have it, your smartphones, you can also find it. New King James Version, Galatians chapter 5, and hopefully 6 this evening. We hope to conclude our lesson this evening, our series on this important book. As we have said in the past, the book is written to brethren who obeyed the gospel, yes, they believed in Jesus and repented of their sins, confessed his name and were baptized or immersed in the water, the remission of their sins. And we know that they were baptized because it says in Galatians 3 and verse 27, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So for all those who, and I, was looking, doing some reading, and there are a lot, most people in the religious world don't believe in baptism or immersion for to become a Christian. They believe that you just need to accept Christ, and that's it. But notice what Galatians 3 verse 27 says. It says, as many of you, that is every last one of you, every last young man, so to speak, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now, how can people claim that baptism has nothing to do with salvation when it says, as many of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ? So how can you put on Christ without being baptized? And to put on Christ is to carry his name you are, now, you are now of Christ. That's what the word Christian means. You are of Christ. You are a follower of Christ. And therefore, these Galatians had done just that. But in the Christian walk, the devil doesn't stop when you are baptized. In fact, if you'll notice when Jesus was baptized, Matthew chapter 3, immediately, turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Immediately, the Bible says, then this, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So you're baptized, don't think that you're now in easy streets. You are baptized, you become a target of Satan. And you never get out of his crosshairs. You're baptized, you're a Christian. Don't think that way because you're a Christian. Well, all your troubles are over. And your life is just going to be a bed of roses. No. You become a Christian and you are going to be under the attack of Satan throughout your Christian life. And therefore you have to get armed and accustomed to this. So the brethren in Galatia, 
they obeyed the gospel. And Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, Well, verse 6 actually. Back up to verse 6. Someone read verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. In the body, please. I hope that you are turned away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to the evil of the gospel. So the devil got the brethren in Galatia to turn away from the message that they were originally taught. Because the devil goes around like a what? Roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the devil wants to turn you into an S. And the S is a sinner, he wants to really turn your life into a big mess. He doesn't want young people we know we have a visitor tonight and his name is Axel. Glad to have him with us and his aunt is here. So he looks at Axel and you know then what the Lord says to Axel. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Well Axel is 24. So he's a youth. Sorry, 23. <laughs> right? And he said to Axel, remember your creator. Well, these persons, male and female, young and old, obey the gospel. And now he wants them, the devil tried to get them now to go to a different gospel. But notice what it says. Axel, read from it. Galatians chapter 1. You have it? Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, 7, and 8. He has a big, booming voice. You know, he's an entertainer.
Pumas or other people. But that was the part of the church in Galatia. And so, Galatians chapter 5. Stand fast. Talking to Christians. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. You know what Christ did? He made us free by setting us free from that law. But you know what the law covered with the law was? Nobody would keep it. The Old Testament law. The only person who kept it was Jesus Christ. So they were under bondage. They were under bondage. So now we have been free to live a life under the influence of the Holy Spirit in serving God. We are free now. So he says, stand fast. He says to young Christians, stand fast. As you go through teenage era, stand fast. Say to my people, stand fast. He's saying to older folks, stand fast. Stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again. No. No. You are free. And freedom is explained because he's saying, you are, you are free. Don't entangle yourself again in what? In the what? Yoke of bondage. And what yoke was that? Living, trying to live under the Old Testament law. He said, don't go back. You left it, don't go back there. Stand fast. Look at verse 13 of chapter 5. But you, brethren, have been called to liberty. That is freedom. Only do not use your liberty. As an opportunity for the flesh, but true love serve one another. Now that word flesh, a very interesting word. And I tell him, and I love the Bible, I love the Bible, I love the Bible. You know why? Because the Bible explains itself. Strange thing. The Bible explains itself. Go down. To verse 24 of Galatians chapter 5. Verse 24, Galatians 5 24. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh. And then he explains what's under the flesh with its what? Lost and what? Yeah, or with its passions, with its passions and desires. So here, so you define what flesh is. Here's what flesh is. Flesh is referring to your evil desires. Your evil desires. And every human being struggles between seeking to Follow the spirit of Christ, Christian, and the deep desires that drive us to you. And we have to have a situation where an evil thought comes up in your mind and you don't make trouble. That's the nature of the life in which we live. Nature of life in which we live is that there's a battle going on between the evil desires, desires of the flesh, and our desire to do the right thing. Follow the Holy Spirit and do the right thing. Now, <clears throat> if you're not a Christian, you're not a bad thing. You don't care. You 
You're not a Christian. You're, you're not allowed to fight that. And you look at what's happening in the world. The Bible says, evil men shall wax worse and worse. Look what that evil is doing. Look at the transgender philosophy that has taken over the Western world. Saying that human beings are not born male, born male and female. Right? And that you can try, you can translate what from male to female and to male to male. That in Canada today, you can fill out the form in which you say that you're male, female, or unknown. Or other. <laughs> While the Bible says, turn to Galatians chapter 1. While the Bible says, Galatians chapter 1, not Galatians, Genesis chapter 1, sorry. Genesis chapter 1. Let's turn to verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. And he said, what? Male and what? There are no other genders. You call them male and female. And what? Right? What is it? And two males can have children. And two females can have children. Is the carrier in these in these are pregnancies. And two years, two years, and one of them is pregnant. And third, what is it called? And third, what is it called? And sometimes I shine in the door and I ask how many people do it for a group of us. Why is it? No, you have to ask. So they have a third part of the universe, the third part. You know, it's not so bad because of my shadow. Here's a way that seems right for a man of the one. And there are other ways of it. America is going to reach the fruits of that doctrine. And the reason I don't think that they know is always safe if you don't reach immediately. Your soul and your way to it. Agree? Yes. Right. The last thing society does after waiting, it was time before they read. And they went away from this. Where did we from? But let's go on. Galatians chapter 1, got chapter 5. You are there? Galatians chapter 5. I testify again, verse 3, and I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he's a debtor to keep the whole law. Why? Why? Because the instruction from God is that if you submit yourself to some of the law, you have to keep all of the law. You are a debtor to keep the whole law. You can't say I'm going to keep part of the law and I don't keep all of the law. In, in Galatians chapter 3 verse 10, it says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written in Deuteronomy 27 verse 26. Curses everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So he says, okay, you, you, you want to live on the Old Testament, you're cursed. Because it says, if you don't keep the entire law, you are cursed. So it says, I testify again, Galatians 5 and verse 3. 
to every man who becomes circumcised that he's a debtor to keep the whole law because that's what Deuteronomy 27 verse 20 says. You have become estranged from Christ. Estranged mean what? What does the word estranged mean? Alienated from you, are, you have fallen from grace, so you have become estranged from Christ, alienated from Christ. You attempt to be justified by a law. You have fallen from grace. Remember, you know, Ephesians 2 and verse 8 says, By grace are ye. So if you have fallen from grace, that means that you have lost your salvation. For we, through the Spirit, now Christians, Galatians, Acts chapter 2, verse 13, Christians, when they are not born in Christians, Acts chapter 2, Acts 2, verse 13, Christians, when they went through the process of conversion, Galatians show you. This in passage Galatians says that this Holy Spirit, verse 22, bears fruits in you spiritually. So he says the fruit of the Spirit is what? Verse 22. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. So you become a Christian, you're sick, you're baptized, your sins are washed away, and the Holy Spirit comes to burn inside of you, and the Holy Spirit guides you through the Word. So when it says in verse 5, for we... Galatians 5 and verse Galatians 5 and verse 5. But we through the Spirit eagerly, that is because of the indwelling spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through law. So when you're a Christian now, it's not, it doesn't matter whether you're circumcised or not circumcised physically. It doesn't matter. Because the law of circumcision is no longer alive. Right? It doesn't really matter. When you're in Christ, no, you're being led by the Holy Spirit. So you look, it says, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ, Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. In other words, what's operating now is you're a Christian, you walk by faith and not by sight. How does that operate? How do we, how, how does it operate? How, when you walk by faith, how do you do it? How do you do it? Eh? 
Verse 7. Look at verse 7. You ran well. Who is he talking to? Who is Paul talking to? Who is he talking to? When he says you ran well, who is he talking to? Come on, folks. The Galatian Christians. He says you ran well. So up to this point, Good race. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 that Christians are involved in a race. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 4. Verse 5, actually. Someone read. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 5. Read. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must first. Right. So he compares the Christian walk with what? Running a race. But it, at the end of 2 Timothy, Paul actually said it. It says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have what? Kept the faith. That means that in this race, in this Christian world, we're involved in a race without competing with any other Christian. The race is all about starting and finishing. If you're a Christian, you must aim to finish. It doesn't matter who else wants to drop out. A lot of people drop out in the race here. You start and finish. So here it is. The brethren in Galatia. Back to Galatians chapter 5. You have run well up to this point. He said, up to this point. He said, it says here, you ran well. And now he says, who hindered you? From obeying the truth. They run with, I know somebody, a false teacher, has come among the church of Galatia and teaching them how to teach them lies on truth. And the Christian world has been now taken by on truth. And the answer is the to be the And I told you this already in a second. I think that I think that I all the main religions in peace that I have. What do you need to say about them? That's what they say we not need to be baptized to see. Every last one. That is how deceptive the devil is. He gets people to believe a lie. And here it says, you have run well, but who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. In other words, this persuasion, so you must be circumcised, this is what doesn't come from Jesus. Because Jesus who called them. So what these false teachers are coming with doesn't come from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
So this is what happened here. Verse 9. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. He said, you're making bread and you put the yeast in. It's the yeast that makes the bread rise. You're making a cake. You put in the baking powder. It is the baking powder that causes the cake to rise. So he says, a leaven, the leaven, it's like the yeast or the baking powder, right? It affects the whole product. And he's saying that this false doctrine is like a leaven. A little It affects the whole law. And that's the danger of false teaching. Your false teaching is that it spreads. No, this is not the only place it said, you know, that passage. First Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. In dealing with the man who had his father's wife and they wouldn't take any action, the same statement is said, it made. A little leaven. You don't do anything about that sin? Well, after a while, other people are going to do it. A little leaven. Eleven is the whole law. First Corinthians five verse six. Second uh, Galatians chapter five and verse nine. Then he says in verse ten, we are looking at Galatians chapter five and verse ten. I have confidence in you. And he says in the Lord. In other words, I have confidence. If you will walk with God, I have confidence you will do the right. I have confidence in you in the Lord. That you have no other mind. But, but, here's the big but. He who troubles you shall bear judgment, whoever he is. So there's a false teacher among them who is troubling them with false teaching, false practices, false doctrines. That's the right term. False doctrine. So we must not be naive. Turn on the radio, turn on television, people preach. <coughs> and you'll swallow what they say like that. Uh, swallow. So the youth must come down to the emancipation party and swallow it. <laughs> swallow it. And I tell you what, you know, I'm just saying, generally speaking, generally speaking, if you hear people in the radio or television, you must weigh what they say with what the Bible says. And the Bible does not teach that you accept Christ. Merely by, and so when Christ comes into my heart, and then you become a Christian, it doesn't say that. Every single, there are 10 cases of Conversion in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, and every last one of them in the Bible. Every last one of them. None of them exist without baptism in the Spirit. Right? So anybody who contemplates conversion to Christianity must contemplate baptism. Right? And I, verse 11, I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? So apparently, 
the false teacher first said that is the Lord teaching circumcision. A part of me. Me? He says, if I was preaching circumcision, how is it that I have all these marks and greetings all over my body? How is it that I bear the scars of what has been done to me? How is it that 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 is true? Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. Paul sets out what has happened to him as a preacher of the gospel. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 and follow it. Sure, go ahead. Second Corinthians 11 verse 3 and follow Read love, please. Second Corinthians 11 verse 3. Are they Hebrews? He's talking about his opponents. Are they Hebrews? So are I. So Paul's greatest opponents here were his former brethren, the Jews, who would not convert. Read. Are they Hebrews? So am I. So am I. Am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am not. In other words, threatened by death often. Look at verse 24. Look. So Paul was a mathematician. He says, five times I got four to minus one. I got 40 minus 1 beatings. 30 minutes. Right? Five is different from it. That's why you have the marks. You have the marks to show the fact that he stands up for the New Testament and would not teach the Jewish doctrines anymore because he used to do it. He says, Five times I got 40 minus 1. Lashes. So, in the book of Galatians, he says, And I, brethren, verse 11, Galatians 5 and verse 11, And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would cut themselves off. Boy, Paul using very strong language. He says, we practice self mutilation. Right? He says, I mean, I mean, he says, I wish they would even just practice self mutilation. Verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. And this liberty is outside, is now living under the teachings of Christ. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the what? Flesh. And we have not defined, but the Bible has defined flesh. As we said at the start, verse 24 of Galatians chapter 5, he says, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So the flesh refers to your the, the evil desires within us. So a lot of the murders that we see taking place today are the results of the flesh. The desires of the flesh. In fact, not me saying it. Look at verse 21. Verse 21 refers to murders as, verse 19, a work of the flesh. Some guys with us, they have a quarrel with someone, they will go and dig up here and whatever. 
right? Because I am God. He is with desire. And that's you. And that's what you're brought to that. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, there are some guys, there are people who think that they feel the life that should be covered. Holding up someone and shooting him. Nothing. In fact, let me use you for listeners. Nyami Apu to kill him somewhere. Make him dumb for killing people. Yeah, that's what you do. Most of you can listen to him using him. Right? But that murder is a reflection of. Evil desire. We are going into the section of Galatians where Paul is saying all this false doctrine and all this stuff is part of the evil desire of the flesh. All right? Let's get down into it. For you, brethren, I've been called to liberty. Verse 13. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the what? For the what? Flesh, meaning evil desires. So we are set free, but we're not supposed to use our freedom to now pursue evil desires. But true love serve one another. Then he says, verse 14, look at verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor. Now, if you love your neighbor, you can shoot him. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Think of, consider other people. Before you're, you're, you're out there, you're satisfied. Consider the effect of what the effect of what you're going to do on other people. Consider it, consider it. Would you like that same thing to be done to you? A few years ago, the head of the gas station, a gun, and they shot the proprietor. Now, when the proprietor got shot, a, stand, uh, a person standing nearby, a licensed fireman, took out his gun and shot the gunman. When the gunman was lying on the gun, no, 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 It's important. Do unto others that you'd have them, don't it? Love your neighbor as yourself. But verse 15 says, Galatians chapter 5, but if you bite and devour one another, beware, lest you be consumed by one another. This is just what happened. We reap what we sow. Look at Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, verse 7 and 8. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Somebody else who has not read for me. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Look what it says. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. 
for whatsoever man saw it. Now the gunman got instant instruction in that teaching. But for lots of people, you don't reap right away. It takes a while. Alright? Read on. Right. The flesh, remember, evil desires. So if you keep on drawing from the well of evil desires, you're going to reap corruption. And you're going to do things that you don't did you just wonder how you do it? That happens to us. Yes, read on. Verse 9. <laughs> Right, so it says it is better to sow to the spirits. It is better to sow good deeds. <laughs> we have this baptism. Galatians chapter 5. 
Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the what is the flesh? Evil desires. In other words, walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And everybody, you said it, right? You walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit by doing what? Following the word of God. So when you're 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 when you come to certain crossroads and you're trying to figure out what to do to deal with this situation, just do it by the way. By just 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 follow the Bible. So even when you're if even when you're wrong, even when you're wrong, that's what you're wrong. You won't say you're right. You're wrong. You're just wrong. Right? Because the book of Proverbs says, Proverbs chapter 28 says, if you conceal your sins, you will not what? Prosper. Proverbs 20 and verse 13. He who covers his sins will not what? Prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, meaning the evil desires that we have, wars against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish when you are under the influence of the flesh. There's a, there's a con, there's a war. We said we start out, we said there's this conflict between between us, between inside each one of us. Look at verse 18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. I know you're walking by faith. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now he says, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh, meaning the things that we do that are a reflection of our evil desires are as follows. Adultery, which is sex between a person who is married and a person who is not. Fornication, all types of sexual immorality, including bestiality, homosexuality, pedophilia, and all those things. Uncleanness, being morally evil. When I say uncleanness, he's not talking about physical uncleanness. He's talking about spiritual uncleanness, morally evil, lewdness. Well, if you want to know about lewdness, go to Moscow. Don't go to Moscow. I'm just saying lewdness under the internet. I'm saying that's what Moscow is. Yes, you understand, right? Right. Lewdness has to do with sexual actions, inappropriate sexual action and dancing as your period. All right? The music was going here at all. All right? Okay. All right. So, so, lewdness is over sexual actions, whether in dance, sometimes you see them on pictures, people under the influence and they are rubbing up against other people and all that sort of thing. That's a rudeness. A lot of dancer moves involve rudeness. Then he said idolatry, placing material things above God. Anything that we place above God becomes an idol. And if you place something about, about God or a person above God, then you are practicing idolatry. 
That means that the system by which you place something above God in your life. And sometimes the relationship can be like that. Sometimes the job can be like that. Sometimes your money can be like that. All right. You can't? Sorcery. Well, we have Haitians here and we have Jamaicans here. All right. Sorcery, voodoo. Jamaica, Obia. America, witchcraft. All right, and Cuba, Santa Rio. You got various expressions of sorcery. Where you, you are seeking to draw on evil spirits and draw on people apart from God. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, the case of confronted sorcery. In Acts chapter 8, it says in verse 4, someone read. Read. No, Philip had, had, was, they laid hands on Philip, the apostles laid hands on Philip, before Philip would perform miracles. All right? I know you weren't here last week, or maybe I missed it. So Philip, they laid hands on him. Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. His name is listed in the list of seven appointed in Jerusalem. Acts 6 and verse 5. And Philip, it says, and in verse 6 it says, Whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Therefore they had the to perform miracles. So Philip goes on to Samaria, and Philip is performing miracles. Read on. Read on.
from Paul's son. No one is omnipotent. They are saying, oh, they are shocking apart from God. Right? And in fact, it's so awesome. But, notice what it says in Acts. In what it says here in Acts chapter 8. It says, verse 9, But there was a certain man called Simon who frequently practiced sorcery in the city. And the Spanish king of Samir, king of the son of Greek, to whom they all gave heed from the least of the great, he said, This man is the great God of God. The man, right, man. And they heed him in because he had astonished with his sword all of that. Watch it on the verse 4. But when they believed in it, and he preached the things concerning his king of God, and the name of the Israel, for the men who were baptized, and so Simon also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued to do it, and was amazed, saying, We are seeing the miracles that the Messiah is for God. So, he understands that this guy is a genuine African. I'm not doing anything. This man is a genuine African. And then he says, And when the apostles who were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria, to see the word of God, it said to Peter and John said. And when they had come down, pray to them, they did not deny to see the Holy Spirit. But as they had to fall upon none of them, they had fallen with that kind of name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and received the Holy Spirit. As they did it. And when Simon saw that through the name of the first man the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. He said, Man. But I went out to this book. I want your book. Because I believe a lot of money for this. Right? So what I'm saying here is that greater is he that believes than he that's in the world. If a single event takes place in your life and somebody says, What about the open? Don't do it. Don't go. Bring it to the church. And let the church pray for you or pray for that situation. Because God's power is omnipotent power. So don't let anybody fool you into thinking that's something for you. It's just a joke. It's sorcery. And it is one of the works of the flesh. Yes. It's 
compare what they're saying with what the Bible says. Very important. Yeah. So at that point, would that be a friend of yours, a family member, even the pastor, because the Bible also mentions that in the latter days, even the very elect will be deceived. Right? Can and will be deceived. So it's very important for us to know what is in the Bible and what it says, and then compare that with what anybody else says. Right. And the final point was regarding issues that people may have. Some people may have an issue or an argument, and they try to use the Bible to support the argument, rather than studying the Bible and then finding other uh, whether it's supporting passages or historical evidence to support what the Bible says. So the thing is, people can create a scenario, create ideas, create arguments, and then say, oh, see here in the Bible. But they're not using the Bible in its proper context to support the argument. So we have to be careful of that. Right. Right. Okay? Right. But the thing that says is to bring up the support of the point. Thank you. 
All things work together for good. Even faith. And out of failure, you can put things together and start to succeed. So the key thing is God. In the midst of failure. You don't need to give up in the midst of failure. While you're a Christian, you realize that right, God is still not God. God is God still. And you can still make it. But positive thinking is important for the positive thinking under the umbrella of God. Because we don't call it success. Many times we do. Alright, one last question. Or something. I'm still Stumbling fall, get married, and keep on running. Body. Okay, on the Roger. But we have in rehearsals tonight for those members of Luna Church. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you. 